This is Nasha Kasha, Ukrainian Almanac. 28 minutes of stories about Ukrainian life. Nasha Kasha is heard on 15 campus and community radio stations from Newfoundland to British Columbia. Vitayu, and welcome in particular to our newest listeners in St. Augustine, Quebec, on the north shore of the Gulf of St. Lawrence, and Kamloops in south central British Columbia. British Columbia is where we are heading. When Victoria Grando was a little girl in Cave, her grandfather showed her a world map, and he asked, Of all the places on earth, where would you like to go? Studying it, Victoria replied, Victoria, British Columbia. We'll hear later in the show how music, regime change, and a good omen made it all possible. Here's Sofia Fedina from Review Ukraine on some trade-offs to consider when leaving for North America. <laughs> Моя хижа солом'яна, жаль, жаль. Лем жаль мітя, моя хижа, лем жаль мітя, моя хижа солом'яна, жаль. Ой, в нас превелика біда, не можна заробити хліба, to stay despite the hardships in Ukraine. But for those leaving for Canada, Victoria does have a lot to recommend it. It's a provincial capital, located on the southern tip of Vancouver Island, which is off Canada's Pacific coast. It is the southernmost city in western Canada, only 60 miles or 100 kilometers from Vancouver, and by air only 100 kilometers from Seattle. Actor and tour bus driver Adrian Sly sings Victoria's praises for a living. Uh, we only get 25 inches of rain a year. Most of that falls in the winter. Very little to no rain in the summer. In fact, I've known I go for four months of no rain at all. Lovely, clear blue skies, just like today. I'm also interested in a tour of Ukrainian Victoria. Robert? For this, I turn to the president of the local Ukrainian-Canadian Congress branch, who offers to drive me around. <laughs> Stefan, welcome to Victoria. My name is Robert Herchak. I'm the president of of, uh, the Ukrainian Canadian Congress, Victoria branch. I'm also on the board of the Ukrainian Cultural Center and the president of the Ukrainian Studies Society, and I wear a couple other hats as well. By Canada census, there are approximately 14,000 people of Ukrainian background in Victoria, much more than we expected. There are a lot, a lot of people now that they don't have an appreciation of their of their roots. When we do our Ukrainian suppers at the Cultural Center, I'm asking what their background is. And invariably, they will say, my baba or my, my mama was Ukrainian, but they have no particular appreciation of what their connection is until you ask the next question. Oh, yes, that's right. I guess I'm, I'm Ukrainian, too. So that's where you come in. 
Um, we That's part of our educational component, yes, absolutely. The Ukrainian community here is pretty active. There are uh, several organizations. The Ukrainian Cultural Center, where we're heading to now, has been an, around for the last 40, 45 years. The center is a crucible for Ukrainian life. It remains viable because it's welcoming and affordable to all. Yeah, it's a women's collective uh, celebrating women in the arts. All women who are making jewelry, uh, chocolate, baked goods, and uh, all the while we're going to have an acoustic stage happening with uh, women playing music and uh, on topics of finance and uh, health. And then we're going to end it with the rock concert uh, featuring women in, in the Victoria scene. Are, are you the head of the organization or a uh, delegate? Yeah, yeah, I'm the curator of it. My name is Carla Olive, and uh, yeah, I'm an artist myself and just want to uh, celebrate. What kind of medium are you an artist in? I'm a singer-songwriter and a musician. So I play quite a bit in in town here. for Peace, Carla Olive's songs are available on iTunes. Selka, Ukraine the Dance Association. All the awards they've won over the years. They've traveled internationally, I think, as far as San Diego. There are about 40 or 50 dancers here. And they rent the studio from us. With ballet bars and mirrors on the wall. They have the instructor here who's been instructing for the last, oh, 10, 15 years, I believe, at least. And grew up with her mother being the previous instructor. And Lisa now does the instructing at the Lester B. Pearson International School. They have a One World concert they put on every year of students from 80 different countries. So it's very interesting to see people of Asian, white, brown backgrounds all dressed up in shirvata and in the blouses dancing the hopak. The Cultural Center does a lot of food prep here, uh, part of our fundraising for all the monthly Ukrainian suppers. Uh, we, when we make pereja or varanike, uh, we rely on 20 to 25 volunteers, and we will pinch about 4,500 varanike each time. It's all handmade, or is there a machine involved? They're all handmade. The only machine involved is a dough roller that's turned by hand. Old school pierogies. We are definitely old school pierogies, and we advertise them as Baba's best handmade pierogies. This library has been here for some time, a good mix of Ukrainian and English books. However, the last time it was cataloged was about 20 years ago, and we are in the process of trying to digitalize everything so that if it's properly done, that we could extend our services here to the University of Victoria as well as Composite College and possibly into high schools. So it would actually become a, a lending library? That's what it would be. Do you have a Ukrainian gift shop here? G gift shop. We have Easter traditions. It's an annual event. And the Shivanka is embroidery, and this is Ukrainian Embroidery Day. You wear your Ukrainian yes. shirts and, and blouses. Yeah. Who is the office manager? Victoria Grando is the office manager for the Ukrainian Cultural Center. Ukrainian Cultural Society of Vancouver Island. In short, Ukrainian Cultural Center in Victoria. And Victoria is the manager. Victoria is the office manager. Remember that little girl, Victoria, who I said wanted to move to Victoria at the beginning of the show? 
This is her. Victoria Grando. Працюю в офісі. She's worked in the office for 14 years and lived in Victoria for 25. Born in Kyiv. 19 років, то вже виходить, що мені більше років в Канаді, ніж в Україні. She's lived in Canada longer than in Ukraine. Так вийшло, всі сміються, кажуть, Вікторія опинилася в Вікторії. Everybody laughs saying Victoria ended up in Victoria. Назвали мене Вікторія. Дуже цікаво була вся моя all of my family, I mean all of it, worked at the Antonov plane factory. My grandfather, my aunt, my uncle, all of my cousins. Everyone except for me. Всі мої двоюродні брати і сестри, крім мене, я одна лише, що не працювала на заводі Антонова. Делегаціїs would visit from foreign countries. Ці канадські дарували They'd leave information about Canada and this fascinated me. Було цікава Канада. Дідуся мені колись подарував карту Світу. I was eight years old when my grandfather gave me a world map. He asked, where would you like to live? Дуся мене спитав, каже, де би ти хотіла бути? І я просто пальцем тикнула в Ванкувер Айленд. Immediately I pointed at Vancouver Island. Did she see the city of Victoria, I asked? Так, я побачила Вікторію. Yes. Також сказав, каже, о, дивися, каже, місто назвали на честь тебе. And my grandfather said, someone named a city after you. Growing up, I sang in a lovely choir. It's called Shchedrik. Дитячому хору Shchedrik. І ми мандрували, ми отримали дуже високу музичну освіту. Our leader, Irina Maklai Nasablina, wanted a top-notch choir. Because she refused to sing communist songs, the bureaucrats began to block her. Дуже їй Батьки в колеса ставили, не давали за те, що ми не співали комуністичні якісь піонерські пісні. Ми співали Моцарт і Бетховен, і Бах, Гендель. Instead we would sing Mozart, Bach, Handel because the words included Alleluia, Amen. The powers that be wouldn't allow us to record. They kicked us out of the community center. And we roamed Kyiv looking for a rehearsal space. One day, I went to a friend's mother's place. And she worked at a hotel. At that time, staying at the hotel was an adult choir Oxford. from Oxford University in England. They sang gospel, and I wanted music from their repertoire. The director, even though he was on the verge of leaving, opened his suitcase and gave me notes and words. He had heard about our choir, and he told us about an international music competition for choirs in Powell River, British Columbia. We applied for the competition, were accepted, and we ended up on tour. It was 1990. Ukraine was still a part of the Soviet Union. While we were performing in Seattle, Ukraine declared independence. They treated us so well. Some of the girls had thyroid problems, victims of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. The громада helped them get medical treatment. We visited Seattle, Vancouver, Victoria. We stayed with families, got to know them. Коли ми з хором в 90-му році були в Ванкувері, нам церква запропонувала українська греко-католицька церква залишитися, сховатися в церкві. The Ukrainian Catholic Church suggested we hide, we seek asylum in their church hall so that we wouldn't be forced to go back. 
нас була ціла група естонської в естонській церкві, естонців на той час. At that time in the same city there was a group of Estonians who were seeking asylum and people at the church in Victoria wanted us to do the same. But we were children. We wanted to go home. Всі хотіли додому, бо з нами ще з нами ще поїхала директорка нашого палацу. Була так як від КГБ, вона дивилася і повинна була забезпечити повернення кожної дитини, кожної дорослої людини. With us on tour came a KGB agent. It was her job to make sure everyone would return to Ukraine. So we went back. Three years later, I was back in Canada. The family that I was billeted with in Vancouver during the tour helped me to emigrate. I applied in 1993, emigrated in 1994. Victoria приїхала до Victoria. Victoria приїхала до Victoria. So Victoria came to Victoria, I say. Indeed. And I exchanged my musical profession for working in a kitchen. Я працювала, робили кейтерінг для українського культурного центру. Я робила це 23 роки. Prior to my current position, I did that here at this center for 23 years. I managed to bring my mother over. Я чоловіка, я маю синулю. I'm married, I have a son. 25 років, то вже мала збудувати щось. Дуже цікава історія трапилася, коли I remember something really interesting when I stayed in Victoria in 1990. А в Вікторії був тоді акваріум. They took me and a number of my friends to an aquarium. Killer whales, ці касати. A handful of us asked to stay late to watch the killer whales swimming around. The orca swam, jumped, and splashed us all, soaking one girl completely. Тобто орка. Як вона плаває? Вона там собі плавала, плавала. Вона плавала, і тут зненацька, як вона вистрибне. І ми всі мокрі. І там жінка стояла... Вона Native Canadian. Nearby a woman, a Native Canadian saw this and she said to us that this was a good omen. Вас обрала, щоб ви тут мешкали. It means that Orca chose you to come live here. Kasha Kasha comes to you every week from CHRW 94.9 FM on the campus of Western University in London, Ontario. We're also heard on CHMR 93.5 FM in St. John's, Newfoundland, on CKDU 88.1 FM in Halifax, on local 107.3 FM in St. John, New Brunswick, on CJAS Radio 93.5 FM in St. Augustine, Quebec, on CJLO 1690 AM in Montreal, on CFRC 101. Point nine FM in Kingston, on CFMU 93.3 FM in Hamilton, on CKMS 102.7 FM in Kitchener, Waterloo, on CKLU 96.7 FM in Sudbury, on CILU 102.7 FM in Thunder Bay, on 101.5 UMFM in Winnipeg, on CFMQ 98.1 FM in Hudson Bay, Saskatchewan, on CFBX 92.5 FM, the X in Kamloops, and on CIVL 101.7 FM in Abbotsford, British Columbia. We've talked about the Ukrainian Romada here and your role in it. What's the best part about living in, uh, in Victoria? Certainly for us, and I'm sure that the vast majority of people that have come from the prairies or elsewhere find that they come here for the climate. Uh, the lifestyle is very laid back. The seasons all blend in. Are there retirees who come and try to touch base with you who are of Ukrainian roots? Unfortunately, one of the deterrents now is that the cost of living in Victoria, Vancouver, and some of the other major cities in BC is uh, outside of the price range. When people do come, I think they appreciate the fact there's a lot of things to do within the Ukrainian community. We provide a fairly strong uh, cultural component, and that is through our monthly Ukrainian suppers. Um, that's for the general public. Several years ago, we completed raising another $150,000 through this very small 
the Ukrainian Studies Organization that now allows for a course in Ukrainian Studies to be offered every year as part of the formal curriculum in the Department of Germanic and Slavic Studies. We're also very proud of the fact that the program of Ukrainian Studies at the University of Victoria is the only one in British Columbia at the university level. My uh, grandparents came to Canada in 1900. They're from um, near Ternopil, and uh, they settled in Manitoba, um, near, uh, not far from Dauphin, alongside Riding Mountain National Park. My father was six years old at the time when he came. My mother was born here in 1901, and I myself am the youngest of 13 children. It was an area that was dominated by a lot of bush, and I've always heard that people from Ukraine came because there was a lot of bush here that they didn't have in, in Ukraine. Um, unfortunately, it also came with a lot of rocks. We still have roots back in, in Manitoba. In fact, the home, the little log home that my mother was born in, uh, has been restored by members of our my extended family, and it is now a heritage site. I um, ended up attending a minor seminary in Manitoba. Then I joined a seminary with the Redemptorist Priest in Ontario. I left uh, the seminary after several years, went on and completed my degree in social work at the University of Manitoba, and then I worked in northern Manitoba in the Northwest Territories and eventually made my way to uh, British Columbia, where I began with the Federal Department of Corrections as a parole officer. My whole career has been in government, either provincially or federally. So you started off wanting to give your life to service, and you, you indeed did, but in a slightly different way. Why did you leave the calling for the priesthood? Is that a too personal a question to ask? I felt that I likely wasn't ready to take on that responsibility. At that time, I think I was 21 years old. But I've always remained and maintained a, a very, very strong connection with the, with the church. Tough sector, the correction sector? It was tough, but at the same time, it was very rewarding. I found that uh, I felt that I was making a small difference, and um, to me, it was just a it was a rewarding government job. Well, the parole officer, you're at the point in the incarceration where the person, male or female, is given a chance to reintegrate with society. It's rewarding for me to, at times, have somebody stop me on the street and say, do you remember me? And uh, then they go on to tell me how well they're doing, and that is rewarding. I'm married with two children. One is adopted Inuit. My wife is French-Canadian, but we have maintained a fairly strong multicultural uh, environment in the home, both French and, and Ukrainian. It, it, tell me about that, that mix and how, how you make it work. I met my wife in uh, the Northwest Territories. We were both working in different components. I was um, involved in, so, in the Department of Social Development, and she was a, um, a pediatric nurse working in a group home uh, for children of um, uh, First Nations children. Uh, when we moved to um, Manitoba, back to working in Thompson, we ended up fostering a, an Inuit child from Churchill and subsequently adopted him. We have always, in terms of our own cultural awareness, we have a, a quite a strong interest in, in fostering the betterment of First Nations people, just making our son more aware of his background and where he is now, and, and that's been of assistance to him. What's his name and what's your wife's name? My wife's name is Lorraine, and uh, she comes from a large French-Canadian family of 14. The Trombley family goes back, I understand, to the 1600s, and they're the largest family name in French-Canadians in North America. About 10 years ago, there were more than 30,000 of them in North America. Oh my gosh, quite the family reunion, if there are any. So your, your, your son, was there a point in his life where he had to go out and search for his people, or was that already included? How, can you, is it too personal to ask? How, how does that work? When we uh, adopted our son, 
his mother was not able to look after him at the time, and uh, though she had always maintained an interest in having him, he has met his mother, and we kept that close contact. He's also met his extended family of the Inuit background. One of his maternal uncles is a senator in Ottawa. He is now applied for, when he was taken in as a foster child, it was all under what is now known as Scoop 60, the where children of First Nations background were taken from their homes and adopted. Our son is now in that legal process of seeking compensation along with tens of thousands of other First Nations children. So there are some regrets that are, have been lasting Absolutely, yes. It's taken him a long time to come to grips, and I think he's still working out some of these issues as to why he was adopted and what have you. The issues are more with respect to the, the government process rather than us as parents. But overall, very rewarding for you. Yes, it is. Okay. okay. I was working in... Um, in northern Manitoba with the provincial government, Department of Social Development, I was a senior probation officer at that time, and I was looking to transfer to British Columbia, where I had several family members here already. We've now been in British Columbia since 1982 and finally considered it our home. My wife, Lorraine, opened up a family daycare that she operated for over 30 years. Our daughter, uh, Suzanne, is uh, nine years younger than our adopted son. She has taken training, is now running a acupuncture clinic, uh, lives in Souk, half an hour away from Victoria. No other province wears its British ties on its sleeve the way British Columbia does, the very name British Columbia. But tell me about the wider cultural mix here, uh, aside from, obviously, the Anglo-Celtic culture. Victoria is a very diverse cultural uh, component here. Uh, we have certainly the British, we have a, a very large French-Canadian component. Surprisingly, people don't appreciate that. And then we certainly have the Asian groups and the Indo-Canadian, a very large component here. The ethnic mix, I think, is, is strong and it's alive and well. Uh, there's a very good understanding of the racial mix that we have here and appreciation of it. If I can just look here locally within the Ukrainian community, though it's not a racial mix, we have a number of Ukrainian Catholics, Ukrainian Orthodox, Ukrainian Baptists, others of various groups and some that don't belong. When this Ukrainian Cultural Center was formed... If I don't belong, you mean they stay away, they'd rather not get involved? Rather not get involved or, or have no particular preference in terms of who they are. However, when the Cultural Center was formed, Stefan, the intent at that time was that this is a center for all Ukrainian Canadians. There was no, we didn't have this kind of sense of a tension between the Ukrainian Orthodox and Ukrainian Catholics that you saw in the prairies or possibly in Ontario. The first board and subsequent boards have always been a very good mix. To us, this is one of the real strengths of this community. And when we reach out to the broader community, we do likewise. We make no distinctions in saying, our first question is, are you Catholic or are you Orthodox or who are you? It's just, are you Ukrainian? And we, we're glad to have you here join us. I'm your reporter, Stefan Andrusiak. Earlier in the program, you heard the Ukrainian dance melody Hopak by the Kapusta Kids. Kapusta is cabbage. Hey, hey, ha, by Newfoundland's Kuba Sonics. Also, the youth choir Shchadrik from Ukraine. And this is Manitoba-born Evan Wish playing his composition, The Man That I Am. Nasha Kasha is also a podcast. You can subscribe free at Apple iTunes and at many other podcast distributors. Partial funding for Nasha Kasha is provided by the Ukrainian Credit Union and the Canadian Foundation of Taras Shuchenko. I'll be back in a week, God willing. Do miluji zustrici, za tiždin času, dorohi sluchači.